Take your game to the next level. You want to be a world champion? Take the fighter training stack. Victor Conte's fighter training stack has brought me to the next level. Everything that I take on a daily basis. The fighter training stack is the best thing out right now. Devin Haney, I'm Snack Strong. Get it now. Right Jay Martinez and Fight Hook TV here with Joel Diaz. Joel, big fight coming up this Saturday. Spencer Zugas, a stack on the card. Obviously, you have a fighter. Towards him, I say it correctly. Where we Mataev. Mataev. He's going to get Stanionis, both undefeated. Talk to us a little bit more how preparation was this time around to face Stanionis. Well, first of all, uh, Rajab prepares himself really well, you know. And I see Stanionis is a very disciplined fighter. Everybody in my team always comes to train. You know, they come with a, with a goal in mind, and that's to win. They, they train to win. They prepare themselves a hundred percent. Raja Butayev is, is a fighter that no exception of the others, but in my team everybody trains hard and they prepare themselves well for whatever comes up. Especially when you're facing an undefeated fighter like Stanionis, we know it's going to be a tough fight. Every fight is tough, every single fight is tough, but you know, at this level of, uh, of opposition, you just got to step it up a little more. You have to work the extra, you have to run the extra mile, you have to work the extra round, and that's just the way it is. You know, Stanionis is no pushover. It's going to be a great fight. Honestly, I can tell you from the whole card, uh, I can tell you that I, in my opinion, that this is going to be the best fight of the night. I personally agree with that also just because, you know, there's a lot at stake. You know, the winner could possibly get Spencer Ugas. Welterweight division is heavily stacked, am I correct? So. Yeah, the welterweight division is one of the best divisions in boxing. And we have a lot of great names. You know, you saw, see you got Ugas, you got Spence, you got Crawford, uh, Victor, uh, what's his name, Ortiz, uh, Virgil Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz. You got a lot of fighters out there in that division, and it's a, it's a stacked division. And these guys are, they're fire, man. They're coming with fire. And I know that Stanionis has been waiting for this opportunity. You know, there's never been a world champion in Lithuania, you know. And uh, for him, it's a dream come true. So he knows what's at stake. He wants to make history, and you know, I don't blame him. But at the same time, Raja Butayev is a very strong, experienced fighter with a lot, with a with a with a great uh, amateur pedigree. You know, he's he's got a lot of amateur fights. He fought, I mean, lots of times in the amateur store. He knows the ring well. He knows Stanion as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think they fought in the amateurs twice, as far as I'm concerned, because he told me he beat Stanionis twice, you know, but that was years ago, you know? So they know they know each other well. Let's switch the page real quick. Jim, every time, you know, Marcus goes to business, we're always there. Stacked with a lot of professional fighters. One in particular that I want to talk about is the goal. I know we talked about it, but just want to give us a quick update for how's the goal doing in camp right now and how you've seen him improve in these past few weeks. All I can tell you is this. The ball is in a good state of mind. He has a good mindset right now. He's in great physical shape. I mean, he's training really hard. He's very focused. And one of the things I always tell the fighters, if you're happy, that's the most important thing. And Bebo right now, he's a very happy fighter. He's training well. He's got great sparring partners. And uh, sparring every every sparring day for him is a fun day because he's he's been performing well. He's doing everything he needs to do. And like I said, you know, and everybody said it, everybody wants to be Canelo. Everybody. And everybody walks in the ring with a mentality of beating Canelo. And I'm not the one that's gonna, I'm not gonna be the last one that's gonna tell you. Oh, you know, but I'm not gonna tell you. This guy's gonna go in there and knock out Canelo, but I can tell you this. This is gonna be Canelo's toughest fight. This is gonna be Canelo's toughest fight because Bebold is a, a natural 175. He's a bigger, he's a bigger man. Natural 175. He's awkward. He's strong. And besides being strong, he's very smart. So he's gonna make Canelo work and think. And I think he's gonna be, I, th I, honestly, I honestly see a fight that people are gonna see the unexpected. I can tell you right now. You know, I wanna go back to what you said. You know, a lot of people, I guess, are misjudging him, misjudging him all, but he's, he's, a, he's one of the 
the toughest fighters out there for Canelo. People just don't know that at the moment. But what makes him one of the what's gonna make one of the toughest fights? Because obviously last year we saw all the displays that he, that he had against all the fighters three times he fought last year. But what makes him a little bit just particular special? Well, that's that's what it is. You know, a lot of people a lot of people don't understand boxing, and you have to be a boxer. You have to be a boxer to know your level. Dimitri Vivo has fought lower opposition before. And if you go back and see, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up one of Vivo's fights. And you look at him, okay, he doesn't look that great. Let me tell you why. I've seen it with some of my fighters in the past. When you fight an average fighter, you drop to their level. But when they give you that, comp that competitive edge, you step up to the opposition. And Vivo is one of those fighters that steps up to that opposition. And that's Canelo Alvarez. You're gonna see a totally different Vivo stepping in the ring against Canelo than you did when he fought, you know, the, the previous fighters. Because I've seen it with Bradley when Bradley was fighting and he fought Pacquiao, you know, he stepped it up, Marquez. You know, it's always every fighter, every, every boxer, you give them a good name, they'll step up to the level. And that's the reason why I see a different fight. I see a fight that, that you're gonna see the unexpected, May 7th. And I, I, I see a great fight. Honestly, I'm looking forward to it because I know it's gonna be a great competitive fight from beginning to end. Lastly, thank you for the you know, hard work, the instruction. Lastly, uh, thank you for the quick update. You know, it's, I'm sure it's great to see the ball hitting that bag and moving everything around the gym. Man, when, <laughs> when that guy hits the bag, he moves the whole gym. Yeah, That's, it's a big fight in the bay. Why don't you take on it? Javante Tank Davis versus uh, Roly Romero. Big fight, you know. Give me your takes on that fight real quick. You think this is going to be an easy fight for Javante, knowing how, you know, Roly Romero is just kind of percent a street fighter boxer in the ring. What do you think about that fight? You know, I don't, I don't see an easy fight. There's no easy fight. Roly has a style. Roly has a complicated style, but I guess that Javante Davis, um, I see Javante Davis breaking, breaking Roly like after the fourth, fifth round. It's gonna be a competitive fight in early rounds, but as soon as Javante Davis starts releasing his power, his great defense, and as smart as he is, he's gonna start breaking Roly down. You know, I don't see Roly going past eight rounds, honestly. I mean, not that he's a bad fighter, it's just that I see the difference in style. Stylistically, Javante Davis is stronger, smarter. Even though Roly is a cool little boxer, but I don't think Roly has the respective, the respective power to get that, uh, get that respect from Javante Davis. You know, still talking about Javante Tank Davis is becoming a, you know, there's rumors he's gonna become a free agent coming up. More than likely, he's gonna move to create his own path, just like Canelo and other, other fighters are free agents. You know, what's out there for him after this? If, if, you know, provided he wins against uh, Roger Romero, what would be the big fights that you would like to see him next? I can tell you right now, a fight that I will be interested in watching at 135 will be him and Ryan Garcia. That's not him and Haney, not him and anybody else at 135. I mean, him and uh, I think Giovanni Davis and uh, Lomachenko will be a good fight. But I think the mega fight at that, in that division will be Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia. Big fights coming up for both of them, provided they win, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we need those big fights because yes. at some point, the sport of boxing fades, you know? And then sometimes we have some really bad fights that people don't, don't end up happy at the end of the day. So we need, I mean, we need, and I say we because we're part of it, we need to bring the good fights um, to the good networks and give the people what they want to see. Give the fans what they want to see. They want to see boxing come back strong and, and watch those good fights. You know, we, we go back and see and, and what happened to those Castillo Corrales type of fights. You know, we don't see them anymore. We don't see those Marquez, Marquez Pacquiao fights. We, we don't see those fights anymore. You know, those fights, we will never forget. There's fights nowadays that we will never remember, you know? And, that, and that's just the way it goes. I'm sorry to say it, and I'm straight up. I mean, I go back, I go back in history, and I see some uh, Pacquiao fights, Marrera, Barrera, Morales, Chavez, you know, all these fights, and Jose Luis Castillo, Chico Corrales, and I, I will never forget those fights. I'll still go back and watch them. 
Now I turn on the TV and I watch a fight. I'll, I'll never remember this fight because nowadays it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a fight. It's not boxing. I mean, I know boxing is you hit and don't get hit. But sometimes you gotta give the people something to look forward to see in the future. Joel Diaz, thank you so much for enlightening us with all of you. It's great to hear from you and good Always, to see man. you. Always, man. Always a pleasure. Thank you so thank much, you. Coach Joel.